Fifth Meeting, Thursday, June 13th, 1974. Meeting at Cambridge in the morning. First question, Woman 1. I used to practice Zen meditation, Samadhi. I was told to count my breaths from one to ten, back and forth. I was then given a koan, the word mu, which means empty. I was told to concentrate on the stomach region, on the blood in the stomach, and to let the chitta spread out into the stomach. As soon as I did this a little, I felt tense in the face, eyes, and head, which caused me to get headaches. While sitting in meditation, there was a lot of noise of the beating of drums and gongs. I tried to relax the body, but I couldn't, and now I only have to think about sitting in meditation and I get a headache. I would like to know why this happened. Answer. Before you began to feel tense in the face and head, was your chitta focused on the noise or at the stomach? Woman 1. It was fixed at the stomach because I had to meditate on mu and then concentrate my energy to go down into the stomach. Answer. What happened concerns a reaction that takes place in the physical body. I understand that you were too determined in doing that practice, so you disturbed the body as if you were having a fight with it. You should ask your teacher, who taught you to arouse such an obstacle, how you should cure it. Woman 1. The teacher would only help while I was staying at the monastery. Having left the monastery, he does not contact his followers by letter. I have now turned to the practice of anapanasati. Answer. You must persist in investigating to search for the reasons why this occurs and change the method of practice to whatever is shown by those reasons to be suitable to keep the jitta constantly in the present. This may be the way to cure it. Second question, man one. What is mindfulness, sati? Answer. When taking hold of anything, you must know that you take hold of it. This is mindfulness. Third question, Man 2. In school, my teachers ask what Buddhism teaches about the creation of the world. Answer. Buddhism teaches people to cure their problems, and so reduce their dukkha stage by stage. This means progressing one step at a time. When you enter a house, you first of all open the door. You don't tear the whole house down to get in. Or again, when children begin school, they learn step by step, class by class, so they go higher and higher gradually. But if you try to teach children who are just starting school about things that are far above their heads, it has no use at all. Knowing about the creation of the world is useless in the same way. Fourth question, Man 2. In taking the triple gem, the Ratana, as our refuge, Sarana, I can understand sufficiently well where it says, I take the Buddha, the Tamma, but in connection with Sankhang Saranangatami, does this mean that we should take the Sankha here as our refuge? Since England still has no Sankha, what should we do? Answer. Buddhang Saranangatami means to take all the Buddhas to be your refuge. Tammang Saranangatami means to take the Tamma that every Buddha taught to be your refuge. Sankhang Saranangatami means to take the Sadaka Sankha of every Buddha to be your refuge. The Sadaka Sankha means those who are Zubadibanno, who have practiced well, Udzubadibanno, who have practiced correctly in accordance with the Vinaya that each Buddha laid down without evading the rules of the Vinaya, Nyaya Padibanno, who practiced for the purpose of knowing clearly and seeing truly, and who let go of everything with Samiti Padibanno, having practiced Tamma in ways that are appropriate to Tamma, and having practiced rightly those things that are the duty of a bhikkhu. The Lord told us to take these as our refuge. The Sangha nowadays that practices in the way described above may be taken as a refuge, because any Sangha that practices properly comes within the circle of the Salvaka Sangha. The Lord said that we can tell whether a true Sangha that we can take to be a refuge exists or not by seeing if it practices properly according to the above standard. 
Fifth question, man two. In England, it is very difficult to find the sankha. Answer. If one takes the sankha as being that which has the characteristics mentioned above, then it is difficult to find in any country. Sixth question, man two. Why must we speak in Pali when the precepts are given? Answer. When the Lord Buddha taught Buddhism, he used the Bali language, and it has meaning accordingly. But if you feel you understand the essential meaning, you can use any language to express it. If we agree that the language of the heart is the important one because it is common to everyone, and if we consider that Bali expresses the language of the heart, then when we speak a Bali word, others who have different native languages can understand it in accordance with their own languages and customs. This is good, isn't it? Seventh question, Man 3. The laws of Gamma and the laws of science are opposed to each other, are they not? Answer. What do the laws of science say? I will speak first about Gamma. Gamma is what people think, say, or do, which is good or evil or between the two, neither good nor evil. Having acted, the result will follow, the result being good, evil, or between the two, respectively. Man 3. Science is not concerned about good or evil or the future. Answer. Can science cure craving? When we are hungry, we simply eat and become full. The way of Buddhism aims to cure the dukkha of craving. It aims to cure anything that causes suffering, from the lowest levels up to the most subtle. Eighth question, Woman 1. I now want to learn how to do samadhi. I want to know myself in a new way, but there is that obstacle which I mentioned before. How can I cure it? Answer. I sympathize with you, but to tell you how to cure it is difficult, because the way of practice differs from the way we normally do things. If a teacher teaches in a certain way and you follow and practice accordingly, how can you be sure that the way he teaches is the right way? You must search for the basic principles that can make you sure that the goal at the end of the path is the same as the one the Buddha taught. A basic principle that I can give you, which is common to all ways, is do not let your jitta go out externally. When the jitta focuses outside, it becomes fascinated by the things it experiences externally. So you must train yourself to refocus your jitta internally and do this time after time. Things that appear to be external may in fact come from your own mind. If they are attractive things, you tend to like them. If they are loathsome things, and what's more important, frightening things, you will be afraid. So in order to guard against fear, you must look after the jitta and keep it inside to arouse calm and peace of heart internally. Ninth question. Woman 1. Nowadays, society is changing, and our world has nothing but confusion and deterioration. How do you think it can be changed for the better? Answer. That the world and society are changing is natural. Society is made up of the people in it. The people in each society must investigate and find out what is good and what is bad for their society, and how it should be corrected so that it will be right and proper. Someone outside that society does not have enough knowledge and understanding to think out how it should be changed. Talk on Tamma in the evening. We are interested in Buddhism because we are interested in learning about ourselves, those who are associated with us, and our surrounding environment. Buddhism teaches how we should act towards ourselves and towards those people and things. As for the sasana, the Buddhist religion, it is neutral because the Lord Buddha bestowed the sasana impartially to all human beings, including us here. If we show no interest in Buddhism, it simply remains unclaimed wealth. But the sasana can become the wealth of people at each and every level depending on the interest they take in it. If people take the practice and the discipline and use them as food for the heart in the way which accords with the teaching of the Lord, the results will be impressive. The heart will become progressively calmer and cooler at each level of development. So the sasana cannot be separated from us, 
for it is the path we must follow to find ourselves. For us, the path is the thing that is necessary, and it must lead us in the right direction if we are to succeed. So we must be careful to study the path to see where it leads, because if we go in the wrong way, we will waste a lot of time. The way of Buddhism is the way of calm. It is niyanika tamma, leading on those who practice so that they can get free from dukkha in accordance with the level of their tamma basis, pumi, and jitta basis. When people who are living in a state of confusion and discontentment and who do not know how to get rid of those things which are unsatisfactory have taken the sasana as their guide, their thinking and behavior become correct and dignified. So the sasana is necessary for those who want what is correct and dignified. The problems which concern us and the sasana are our own problems. In other words, we are bound to be born, to meet with dukkha and hardship, and to die. Our problem is, having been born, how should we act so as to be trouble-free and contented, without accumulating dukkha and trouble for ourselves, or making trouble for others and for society in general? Death is something that nobody wants. This is because of a fear that we will be completely destroyed at death, or that we will experience dukkha and hardship after we die. But if we knew that after death we would experience ease and contentment, everyone would want to die now, because there are things we hope to get that have greater value than what exists here in this life. But if people are still not sure whether after death they will come to destruction or to happiness and contentment, they do not want to die. The principles of Tamma stand unshakably on their own. They are certain and can be accepted on faith. The speech of the Lord Buddha is correct and accurately spoken because it comes from the purity of his heart. The Lord Buddha knew for himself every aspect of Tamma before he gave it as a teaching to others. He had practiced and attained the fruits of it to his heart's content, and he taught with a pure heart filled with compassion for all beings. Therefore the Tamma is a Tamma which gives hope to those who practice it fully. When we have practiced it wholeheartedly, hope will become clearly apparent to us. Those who rightly practice Tamma in their hearts, following the principles of Tamma, can see the proper results appear in themselves with certainty. Once you understand the principles of Tamma that you have put into practice, your former knowledge, which was uneven and inconsistent, is all overthrown, or so it seems to the heart. Then, for as long as you live, you will never be afraid or timid, because you know how you practiced and how it gave results, step by step. When this life ends, where you will be reborn and whether you will receive sukha or dukkha is already clear to you with no room for doubt. Therefore, one who practices following the way of the Lord Buddha can cut off all fear and doubt so that there remains only the entire truth and a life full of happiness and contentment without any trouble. Therefore, you should learn about your own problems so as to bring them to an end. Then the sasana will help to arouse hope in your future. Questions and Answers First Question Man 1 I would like to know about the practice of tamma so that when I grow older I will not get troubled and agitated. Answer when we observe things along the road which we are traveling, we can gauge whether we are going the right way or the wrong way. Once we have decided which destination we are headed to, we should first of all learn the way to get there, and then we go that way. When we go the right way, there are no problems. Buddhism teaches us to avoid things that are dangerous. It teaches that the citta should have its own basis, foundation, so that it will not waver or be afraid, being doubtful about death and how things will go after death. Nor will it be interested in thinking about anything external to itself, which would be like grasping at shadows. If you are going to a place and you are not sure that you will find everything convenient there, you will probably prepare yourself and take all sorts of things that you might need so that you will have everything. Then you may be certain that everything will be convenient and that you will lack nothing. When you are sure that you will find food there, 
Plus, you have also taken food along with you. You do not feel any apprehension. Virtue is comparable to food, for food is food of the body, and virtue is food of the jitta. The practice of dhamma will produce the food for the jitta which you carry along with you. Then the heart will be at ease, so that whenever you die, you will not experience dukkha. We know that the body needs food, so we eat whatever type of food the body is lacking. The jitta needs virtue and dhamma. When it lacks this food, the factors of confusion arise, making the heart uneasy and troubled. We should therefore know where we are deficient, and then hurry to correct it so that we accumulate virtue from now on. You who have come here to search for what is good, which is food for the heart, should practice samadhi meditation. If you constantly do virtuous things, your jitta will have skill, courage, goodness, and certainty about the future. This is like someone going on a journey who has arranged everything that will be necessary for his use on the way. We are going on a journey, coming from which state of existence we do not know. But we are human, which means we are people living now, whether men or women. Since birth we have experienced dukkha and sulkha, with difficulty and confusion, and we have gradually come to know this. We have learnt lessons from the events of our own past, and we know one day in the future we are bound to die. After death, how will it be? If we act so as to develop our jittas to attain complete clarity, this question can answer itself, so that we have certainty, ease of heart, and a feeling of confidence in ourselves. Second question, and two. That method of practicing samadhi, do you teach it for all people, or are there different methods? Answer. This teaching is a general method, which whoever wants can start with. But when it has been really and truly practiced, the results which each person gets will differ according to the level of the basic state of each jitta. After that, a method will be suggested which is suitable to each individual's disposition, zarida, because there are many methods of doing samadhi to suit people's varying temperaments, like medical treatments which must suit the disease in order to cure it. Third question, Man 3. When practicing samadhi, is it important to have a teacher to advise us? Answer. When the jitta becomes more and more subtle, you increasingly need a teacher to explain whether any particular way is right or wrong. When practicing samadhi, you will come to know new things which you have never known or seen before, which, if indulged in, will increase delusion. Therefore, a teacher becomes increasingly necessary. Fourth question, Man 1. Yesterday you spoke about training for samadhi, saying that we must also contemplate, investigate. How do we do this contemplation? Answer. Contemplation analyzes things into the various components that make them up. For example, your body is composed of various parts which make it up, and you must use wisdom to analyze them. Fifth question, Woman 1. Apart from contemplating the body, can we also contemplate other things? Answer. Yes, you can. By contemplating from outside, going inwards, or contemplating from inside, going outwards, if you have understood the food of the body and of the heart. Sixth question, Man 4. Are the methods of doing samadhi of Jesus Christ and the Lord Buddha the same or different, and how? Answer. Every true religion teaches people to be good. I do not dare to put Jesus and the Lord Buddha in the ring to have a boxing match to see who is champion, because the religions do not have anything to argue and fight about. But we people who are variously Christians and Buddhists like to quarrel and fight with words because of being stubborn. We do not practice the way of either religion. The teachings of the founders of each religion give us a right path to follow, so we ought to contemplate the virtues of the founders. It is as if we are walking along a path to a particular destination. At first we go along a path that we know, until we reach a point where we do not know the way, so we ask someone who knows, and they tell us the way to go further. As soon as we again reach a point of uncertainty, we ask again. 
We continue like this until we reach the goal at the end of the path. The one who points out the way is a benefactor to us, and we ought to reflect upon his gift to us. The Lord Buddha saw clearly into Tamma, because he understood clearly the method by which he had trained himself. Therefore it was never in vain that Buddhists turned to him. He was always ready to help the world to get free from various dangers, with methods which were full of metta. To summarize, in both religions the founders compassionately taught people to be good in the same way. They are different in their degrees of subtlety, following the abilities of the founders of each religion. Seventh question, Man 5. Doing the repetition of Buddha, must we do it just on its own, or together with the in and out breaths? Answer. It is up to each person to do it as he likes. It can be done in three ways. 1. Simply repeat Buddha, 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 etc., until the jitta remains still with Buddha. 2. Repeat Buddha in time with the in and out breaths. 3. Meditate Buddha with the in breaths and to with the out breaths. It is important to depend on mindfulness to know and attend to the work that you have set your jitta to do and to avoid anticipating the results which you may get from doing the practice. When mindfulness and the work go along together, the result will come of itself steadily from the practice of meditation. Eighth question, Woman 2. Please, would you explain about mindfulness in daily life? Answer. Mindfulness is an aspect of tamma that is essential everywhere in all situations. It allows you to recollect and to know yourself all the time, whatever you are doing and wherever you are in all activities. To what extent can we practice it? The Lord Buddha intended that we should have great spiritual wealth, but the extent to which we ourselves can have it depends upon the ability of each person. When you have mindfulness always with you and working all the time, then you can sit in samadhi in whatever way you like, but it is important that mindfulness keeps your attention on just the work that you are doing.